Hey, what's up? It's Jim, and today I'm going to talk about Good Night Nurse from 1918. And this continues my series where I try to review the entire filmography of Buster Keaton. When this movie starts, I sort of, uh, it's a little rough. At the beginning, I was like, wow, this is like taking a turn for the worse. It made me feel like series, the comic film company, films that Keaton was doing had taken a turn for the worst, maybe. And I was a little not into the beginning part. And as this film went on, I ended up liking it more and more. So much so, this isn't flow-wise and in terms of my enjoyment of it, didn't feel like the same way I've gotten used to with these Fatty Arbuckle shorts. Most of the time, like, there's some funny gags in the beginning, they sometimes, it turns into a completely different short in the second part or something. But in this film, it like sort of slowly builds like through this character thing to him going to a sanitarium for alcoholism which i'm assuming was a thing at the time i don't really know but it felt differently and i sort of like that i think this is kind of a weird one to watch because at first you're probably gonna not be as into it but it really really comes around this definitely feels like more of a fatty arbuckle short than the previous ones which were kind of showing off more of the company and fatty arbuckle this is predominantly a fatty arbuckle short however that works more for the story they're trying to do or the film they're trying to do rather than kind of doing what they did in the previous films now when Fatty Arbuckle at first he's in just in the rain and it's raining and he's trying to light a cigarette and I kind of wondered if that sequence was I don't know if they had rain machines in 1918 like the way they do in movies now I mean certainly not the way they do in movies now but I'm not sure how rain machine I don't know the history of rain machines if someone made that YouTube video probably right someone somewhere if, if they did link it below I sort of think that sequence was and I'm literally just making crap up right now but I sort of think that sequence was maybe planned to be shot in front of that set in front of the bar and then it started raining and they said oh it'll be funnier this way and I think it does it makes it a little weird because you're like wow everybody's getting really wet out here and seeing Fatty Arbuckle's character just like trying to light a cigarette in, in the rain showing how drunk he is. He hangs out with like kind of this millionaire guy or he hangs out with this guy in a top hat. I don't know if he's rich. I just assume that he's wearing a top hat. That's really... I shouldn't do those things. But then he makes friends with a street musician and then brings it home and then his wife's like, fuck this, you're going to the sanitarium to get cured of alcoholism because the musician and the girl with the musician has like a monkey and all this stuff. And then he goes to the sanitarium and that's when like the real like funny parts happen. I don't, I wasn't really laughing at the beginning. I was more just like kind of confused. It was like, so he's so drunk, he's laying a cigarette in the rain, which is like funny, but not like ha ha funny, more like, oh, that's an interesting character character choice I guess. When he gets to the sanitarium it really gets funny. You have Al St. John and Buster Keaton playing people's in the sanitarium. I believe Buster Keaton's a doctor. Al St. John's like a nurse maybe? The real hilarity kind of starts and they kind of go from set piece to set piece and kind of go all over. It's kind of funny like how many things it leads to to like a 200 pound fat run to like even like ether jokes to like him being lassoed uh, to Joe Keaton having an uncredited role as the guy in bandages at the beginning or supposedly according to things I found on the internet. I quite like this movie. I think it has a really funny flow to it in the way that the whole sanitarium parts, it feels a little spooky and they definitely play off of the haunted houseness of a sanitarium. Not like too much, not overly, but they definitely like play in that. I'm curious because they bring up that, you know, they have an operation that will cure alcoholism and I'm not sure if that's like a lobotomy joke or not. I mean, I know they did lobotomies then, and I'm assuming, like, because they had that ad, is the reason Fatty Arbuckle's in the sanitarium, is that because uh, there's this operation that will cure you of alcoholism, which I'm assuming is a lobotomy in terms of, like, all the blood on Buster Keaton and such. I, I sort of think that's what they're insinuating, but uh, maybe it's something else. I like the whole idea of him with this girl, and it plays in kind of a weirder way, and then when you find out at the end, spoilers, I guess, that it was all a dream, it kind of makes it all sort of make a little more sense because it's so sort of nonsensical in a way. It both feels like a Fatty Arbuckle short I've seen before and also feels like one that's completely different. And I sort of like that about Goodnight Nurse. It kind of took me a little bit to get into, but I think this is a really rewarding one and probably actually one of my more favorites. I just think it probably starts off rather rough, which is sort of surprising because you'd think they'd want to grab the audience immediately 
And I've seen some people like disregard it or say like, oh, it's just typical things uh, because of the typical drag thing and where he flirts with Buster Keaton, which I thought was funny. I don't think it was hilarious, but I noticed the parts where him and Keaton play off each other, particularly the part, not just because this is a Buster Keaton series, but in general, when he like lassos Fatty Arbuckle, that was, that was a really cool sequence. And honestly, I noticed sometimes with these gags, like plot wise, you could cut them out, but it shows a lot of how like sometimes a little joke will do a lot to like pep up a film in terms of its humor and also just um, make it more enjoyable as well. A lot of these make me think like sometimes editing isn't getting as tight to the plot as you can. It's about making like the best movie and the most fun movie and oftentimes I feel like that's how Fatty Arbuckle or Roscoe Arbuckle as a director really shined. Probably why after the whole scandal thing he could continue being a director under an assumed name because he was actually a very talented director. I think this shows that especially and certainly Keaton would use dreams in his short films as well and I think dreams have always been sort of a film thing but this film puts you through so many different gags and gag ideas that by the end you're like of course and it's kind of funny it brought a smile to my face but the drag stuff I, I didn't mind it's almost feels like so like like okay you have to hit all these beats and so forth I thought it was probably the best uh Arbuckle switch in drag personally and I thought it was a funny sequence I like the idea that the woman he's trying to get out of the asylum who's played by Alice Lake is literally credited or at least in the Wikipedia as crazy woman. <laughs> I think it's funny. I don't think that's actually in the film, but maybe she's not. It's it's a good way to identify her, I guess. So I can't disagree with that. I like that whole idea that she like wants to get out, but she clearly like doesn't. She's just like fucking with him. It almost feels like a lot of this is a fool's pursuit to go into, but it's like it's not so much about why you're doing the pursuit. It's just the pursuit itself, which I think is a very true thing to say about Good Night Nurse. I uh, really enjoyed this film. I would recommend it. I also kind of I could remember it because remember in Animaniacs where they go like hello nurse this is like <laughs> like when that nurse walks out and they're like goodbye nurse which they never said but good night nurse shows kind of the surrealism that you can really do with a silent comedy but it also shows the the kind of humor you can have by like playing with all these different like tropes you've had throughout all this which this film definitely checks and has a lot of fun with definitely has a weirder flow to it and i can understand if people are turned off by it and kind of want to disregard it because your intro to it kind of hurts the humor in it if you ever watch saturday night live and then see a sketch go viral and you watch the entire show and it didn't work as well because you've had to watch things that weren't necessarily as funny i sort of would say this is semi like that because at the beginning you're not as into it it just feels like little weird character beats that maybe are a little more depressing than you really think about and then he goes and gets a lobotomy how did he make this funny jesus i really like good night nurse and i think it speaks to the humor of the comic film company and i like that they actually tried something different and it worked out as well as good night nurse does so if you have seen good night nurse and you would like like to talk about it then comment below in the comments and subscribe if you would like to